Hi, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to discuss how exercise stimulates certain changes, adaptations in the blood that help to improve fitness and athletic performance. Our bodies go through some of the most amazing adaptations in response to exercise, resulting in improved fitness. Now, we often think of these changes in the context of improved strength and muscle hypertrophy and improvements in the strength of the heart. But did you know that your blood also changes in response to exercise? So watch till the end of this video and we're going to talk about these adaptations and changes that take place in your blood and how this results in improved fitness. And we're also going to talk about the best type of exercises that will stimulate these changes within your blood. If you like this video and find this useful, please click the like button. Please leave your comments below and share this video. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of my future weekly video release. Please also subscribe to this channel. This is completely free of charge, but we'll have the channel to grow. Thank you. Just a bit of physiology. Have you ever considered how nutrients and waste products are taken to and from your muscles? Well, your heart works hard to pump your blood into the blood vessels throughout the body. And there are three types of blood vessels, one of which is going to be very important to our adaptation story in this video. The first type of blood vessel I'm going to mention are your arteries, which deliver oxygen-rich blood away from your heart to the various tissues, like your quadriceps. So, when you're exercising your quads, blood will get there through the femoral artery. And there are smaller arteries that come off that femoral artery and go into the individual muscles. And these arteries will eventually flow into the second type of blood vessel called the capillary. And this is where nutrients and waste products are exchanged with the tissues of the body in the bloodstream. So we might have glucose and oxygen diffusing from the capillary into the working muscle and then carbon dioxide and other metabolic byproducts which come out of the muscle and into the capillaries and then into our veins. Our body has various mechanisms to deal with these metabolic byproducts before our blood is returned to our lungs for oxygenation. One of the adaptations that occur with consistent exercise over time is increased capillarization. Or in other words, we literally increase the number of capillaries that are going to grow and penetrate into the muscle tissues. Well, you're going to ask, growing more capillaries isn't technically a change within the blood itself, but it will have an increase in number of capillaries and therefore more tubing. We can feel that extra tubing with more blood and our body will increase the blood volume as a response to consistent exercise. And it will have more blood. We could take more nutrients to the working muscles, have more efficient exchange within the muscles in the cardiovascular system or the bloodstream, and take more of those metabolic byproducts out of those working muscles. So that is one of the important adaptations that occur within the blood. Increase the overall amount or volume, and therefore increase the carrying and exchange capacity of the blood. But this is another adaptation we need to consider. And for us to understand this, we have to look into what blood is actually made of. Well, blood can be taken down into pretty much two main components. The fluid component, which is typically referred to as plasma, and is primarily made up of water, but also has electrolyte and plasma proteins. And how we would increase this or increase the volume of our blood is by taking in water and electrolytes. And the liver can also help to create more plasma proteins. Now, the other component of the blood that we need to consider is the cellular component. Yes, there will be blood cells and platelets. But the cell type we are most concerned about with exercise are the red blood cells. And the main job is to carry oxygen. So if we have increased the fluid component of our blood or the overall volume, it would make sense to pair that with an increase in number of red blood cells. And our body does this by producing more red blood cells in our red bone marrow, which is just found deep within your bone tissues in something called spongy bone. But let's step back a bit and summarize. So we have increased the number of capillaries penetrating into the muscle tissues, and we are going to have extra blood filling those extra number of capillaries. So now I'm able to take more fluid to the working muscles. I'm able to take more carbohydrates, fats, and more of these red blood cells, and therefore oxygen to go into these muscles. So now I can create more of the currency of our cells, which is known as adenosine triphosphate or ATP. So if my muscles have more energy to utilize, you can see how that could improve fitness and athletic performance. Well, you're going to ask now, what type of exercise 
best stimulate these adaptations that we have been talking about. And let me start by saying this, for someone who is detrained or deconditioned or just hasn't been exercising for a long time and then they go from say like couch to an exercise routine, in that situation you get some level of increased capillarization, increased blood volume for pretty much almost doing any type of physical activity. But eventually you're going to get this point where certain types of exercise do a much better job with stimulating these adaptations and these type of exercises tends to be endurance based. So think like steady state cardio from like cycling or running. Now if you have watched some of my previous videos, you have probably heard of the benefits of zone 2 training. Zone 2 represents a level of intensity where you could be running but you could still hold a comfortable conversation with the person you are running with. Now, that doesn't mean that you couldn't stimulate these adaptations by going into like zone 3 or zone 4. That is a little bit more intense endurance type of training. It is just with zone 2 training, you can accumulate a lot of volume. And I'm talking about exercise volumes here, not blood volume in this case. Meaning that you could do a lot of exercise throughout the week without burning out or overtraining. And so you can get a lot of stimulus with zone 2 training. But you know, as we continue to increase the intensity, the further we increase the intensity, we start tapping into more of those fast twitch fibers adaptation. Remember with skeletal muscles, there are fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers. Fast twitch fibers, also known as white fibers or type 2 fibers, are skeletal muscles that help with power performance for short periods. Because so much power is used in a short time, these muscles become fatigued faster. Furthermore, these fibers don't actually utilize as much blood and oxygen like the slow twitch fibers do. Now, another way to stimulate the increased blood volume and capillarization and red blood cells is through certain types of resistance training. But here, you want to focus more on the endurance rep range, that is low weight and high repetitions. And this would be exercises like push up or body weight squat to failure. Just a quick recap here. Remember lifting very heavy weight for 1-3 to three reps is for power and strength. Lifting moderate weights for up to 8 repetitions stimulate muscle hypertrophy and a rep range of over 10 enable you to develop strength endurance. And these type of exercises that stimulate these adaptations are also going to be the exercises and activities that benefit from these adaptations. Let me explain to you what I mean. Like for example, you might be able to improve the number of push-ups you do, run for a longer distance, and more efficiently. And this actually isn't foreign to a lot of people who have done some exercising in their lives. And they tend to have a pretty good idea that specificity is pretty important when it comes to an exercise goal. And what I mean by this is when your main goal is to run a marathon, you're going to spend the majority of your time running. So we're not going to have a marathon runner spending the majority of their time doing heavy resistance training and vice versa. The next question is, can these adaptations of blood help with strength and explosive activities? Well, you might be thinking adaptations such as increased capillarization, blood volume, increased red blood cells, and oxygen isn't going to do a huge amount for you. If you focus on lifting heavy weight, say in that moment when you do your one rep max, or even during your heavy weight sets of like four to six repetitions, or weight that is so heavy that you can only do four to six reps, or isn't going to be of much help when you do your vertical jumps or sprint down the basketball court. Well, we know that metabolic byproduct created in the fast twitch fibers, like lactic acid, can be funneled into the neighboring slow twitch fibers within the same muscle. And those slow twitch fibers can process those metabolic byproducts, and the slow twitch fibers definitely benefit from the increased capillarization, blood volume, and oxygen. So, that means that someone who is doing heavy weight training or the basketball player could potentially recover more quickly between working sets or that basketball player could recover more quickly during ball stop, like say during a free throw, if they had some level of these adaptations. So again, we're not going to have the weightlifter or basketball player spending a whole bunch of time in steady state cardio or that weightlifter spending a whole bunch of time lifting lighter weight and high reps in the endurance strength range. But they could add a little bit of these exercise choices into their overall training plan and they could get that benefit of increased recovery which is pretty awesome. Until next week, take care. 
Thank you for watching until the end. If you like this video, please click the like button. Please leave your comments below and share this video. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of my future weekly video release. Please also subscribe to this channel. This is free of charge but will help the channel to grow. If you're interested in improving your health and fitness or losing weight, if you suffer from or wish to prevent back pain, please take a look at my book, which is now available from Amazon Worldwide. Thank you.